Welcome to Smokestack Soundbites, audio stories from Everett Public Library about the history and life of our city and our county. Everett once proudly adopted the nickname the City of Smokestacks for its many smoke-belching mills. We have changed since then, and we hope our sound bites will give insight into who and what Everett and Snohomish County have been from then until now. In this edition, the library's Van Ramsey relates the story of the Forest Park Zoo in Everett. No, not the petting zoo, but before that, when our zoo had exotic animals like lions, bears, wallabies, and even an elephant. We call it Requiem for Rosie. For more than 40 years, the city of Everett housed an expanding collection of exotic animals at its zoo facility in Forest Park. The zoo is gone now, but memories remain. I'm Van Ramsey of the Everett Public Library. Historically, zoos arose out of noble impulses. Standing face-to-face with a wild creature opens a crack in our day-to-day experience, allows us to peer at the inhabitants of faraway lands, to imagine the plains of Africa or the jungles of Malaysia. The Forest Park Zoo enthralled many thousands of visitors beginning in 1914 and on up into the late 1950s. To truly understand the Everett Zoo story, however, one must enter a time machine. In 1914, and on up into the 1960s, well-meaning amateurs ran zoos, even some of the larger ones, with people generally believing that good intentions meant good results. Even authorities with solid reputations thought animals did not suffer in captivity, that wild animals were better off locked in cages than living in the wild. We now know that caged animals can suffer depression and mental illness due to isolation. Like most zoos, Everett's was built through donations of animals. The Herald's news columns are dotted with stories about animal additions. One 1923 story reported that the zoo had 200 individual animals, including 35 mammals. There was a kangaroo, a marmot, four bears, rabbits, a mink, goats, three elk, two bison, three coyotes, a badger, a raccoon, and a skunk. Various birds made up the rest of the collection. Later, the zoo was to add lions, leopards, and monkeys, and free-roaming peacocks were a feature for many years. But every zoo worthy of the name had an elephant. Throughout the nation, zoos conducted fundraising drives, often soliciting pennies from children to purchase an elephant for their zoo. Elephants were celebrities, their exploits described with language usually reserved for royalty. Everett had to wait 37 years to get its elephant. Like most zoos, Everett's was run on a shoestring. The main expense was grain for the birds. For the rest, there were greens from parks director Odin Hall's garden, scraps from the butcher, carcasses gathered by the street crews. (laughs) Pens and cages were small and bare, and parks staff too small to ensure proper cage cleaning. But since animals weren't thought to suffer, no one thought it really mattered. As with most zoos, Everett's zookeepers had to wing it when caring for animals. Even at larger zoos, zookeepers did not understand what animals needed to eat. Mary Benbow, writing in the Journal of Popular Culture, reports, Gorillas at one zoo were fed a diet consisting of sausages, cheese sandwiches, boiled potatoes, mutton, and beer. Likewise, veterinary care was hit and miss. Most zoos contracted with local veterinarians who knew more about dogs or cattle than they did about elephants, lions, or monkeys. During the 1950s, televised nature documentaries and later series like Wild Kingdom, hosted by Marlon Perkins, showed Americans feral animals living in the wild. The contrast between zoo animals and feral ones shocked many in the viewing audience. It was the beginning of the end for old-fashioned concrete and cage zoos. In 1951, Everett finally got its elephant. The elephant was donated by Harold Rumbaugh, who had, for decades, operated a department store in Everett and later co-owned several circuses, including the Horn Brothers Circus, from which three-and-a-half-year-old Rosie the Elephant came. That year, Billboard magazine reported only 264 captive elephants in the United States. Rosie was indeed special. (laughs) 
Rosie's arrival in Everett was announced in the Herald's June 13, 1951 edition. Kids fed clumps of grass and peanuts to the gentle little lady with captivating ways. The article forecast that the young elephant would be a feature for many, many years to come. It was not to be. Elephants were particularly susceptible to the effects of living in a small, dirty cage. They would often develop a foot condition called foot scald, which can occur when they are unable to blunt their foot pads as they could in walking through wild brush. In June 1955, amid growing criticism of the Forest Park Zoo, Mayor C. Arvid Johnson ordered the Everett Parks Board to investigate the condition of Rosie, who was reported to have a badly infected foot, and of the lions, and come up with a plan to rectify deplorable conditions at the zoo. But better conditions required an increased budget, and that was not forthcoming. The city floated several bond issues in the late 1950s, but all failed. In mid-October 1955, Rosie contracted an undisclosed ailment and quickly perished. It was a sad day for Everett. In the wild, an Indian elephant like Rosie can live up to 60 years. Rosie lived only eight. Through the next decades, Forest Park reduced zoo expenses by giving away animals. The peacocks and bears, kept near the park entrance, were the last to go, lingering into the mid-1970s. This short report is meant to be a tribute to the animals of Forest Park Zoo. Over the zoo's five decades, tens of thousands of visitors looked into the eyes of the animals there and dreamed about faraway places. What the animals thought and felt, we can never know. But we do know, with the benefit of hindsight, that the price of our enjoyment included their suffering. As we step out of our time machine into 2015, we watch as Seattle's Woodland Park Zoo's elephants are shipped to Oklahoma City after charges that they were inhumanely treated in Seattle. While some people feel that the move benefits the elephants, others feel that nothing short of retiring them to an animal sanctuary out of the public eye would be acceptable. And so it goes. This is Van Ramsey for Everett Public Library. Thank you. That was Van Ramsey, the Everett Public Library. This is a production of the Everett Public Library. Check for other EPL podcasts at www.epls.org slash podcast slash soundbites. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.